Hi, this is Nick Williford and Manos Berlakis, presenting case 296 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of strong Guy Carter support, as well as sequential troubleshooting in complex cases. The patient had previous coronary bypass and was referred for PCI of a right coronary CTO because of significant angina. He did have a previous vein graft to the right that was occluded. Looking at the lesion, there is heavy calcification throughout the right coronary artery. There is also a tapered proximal cap, long lesion length, 50 to 60 millimeters, bifurcation of the distal cap, and the distal vessel, the PDA, is filling through septal collaterals from the LAD, which in turn is filling through the lima. Therefore, our plan here was to try undergrade wiring and ADR and also try retrograde through the occluded saphenous vein graft. We used an AL1 guide. This is a 7 friends uh, trap liner, Corsair XS, uh, Gladius Mongo, and we literally could not advance the wire past the proximal cap. We also used the Gaia X2, which just could not penetrate through the proximal cap. So we injected a small amount of contrast. This is HDR, hydrodynamic canalization. We are seeing some contrast potentially getting through. And uh, that uh, helped. Uh, we then used uh, the same Gladius Mongo guide wire, and the wire went a little further down. But the problem we had is the microcatheter could not get through, and that was in part because of poor guide support. You see the guide extension almost coming out, the guide is not sitting properly in the vessel. We repositioned the guide, we had the guide extension come further down, and with injection through the lima, we see that the guide wire is dancing along the vessel and is probably inside an acute marginal branch. But we could not get anything. We tried the subfire one millimeter balloon that did not work. We tried a 1.5 millimeter Takeru, and the one that went the furthest down was the micro RX. We also tried to find cross M3, but again, nothing would cross through the proximal right coronary artery. After multiple attempts, we decided to change our plan. So we went down the saphenous vein graft. Multipurpose guide, we had the same guide extension. But similar issues, we were able to get down halfway in the graft, and then we could not go past that area. We tried a Gladius Mongo wire, we even tried a, a Gaia wire, Gaia X2 and Gaia X3. We just could not get through. We also had support issues with uh, the guide and the guide extension. We tried contrast injection, could not make any headways. We even tried what's called a tilt or tunnel in landslide technique. We used a 5.5 friends guide extension. We put a wire next to it. This is an 8 friends guide. Inflated a small balloon next to the guide extension, providing very, very strong support. But despite that, we're seeing here using stiff wires, using a Mongo wire, we were not able to get through the saphenous vein graft. And this is the illustration of the tunnel in landslide. Essentially, this is having a guide extension with a balloon next to it, pinning the guide extension against the vessel wall. This truly provides very, very strong support, but this was not sufficient in our case. So we failed to cross the saphenous vein graft, and we went back to undergrade, but we kept on fighting with the same issues of poor guide support. We would use the guide extension, we would sit our guide well, but then every time we push, everything would come out. And we finally changed our guide, and we used uh, a um, 3D right guide. And after doing that, we used again a guide extension, and now we had much better support, and we were able to advance a Gladius Mongo the furthest down in the vessel than we had before, and this time it is not going into a side branch. We were able to get the guide extension. Now this is a six French guide extension further down into the vessel. And then we advanced the knuckle wire further down, hopeful, hoping that it would go along the course of the PDA. But the wire seems to be going in a different direction. So we did uh, different projections, trying to understand where the wire is going. Um, we did not think it was going outside the vessel. 
and retrospectively there may have been some tenting of the vessel from the touchdown of the previous bypass craft. But we still wanted to get to the PDA, so we tried uh, to redirect with various guide wires. Now we're able to get the knuckle uh, in a different location, but still not quite where we'd like it to be. So what we ended up doing is uh, try different planes. The knuckle went into a location, which is the um, essentially small PDA-like branch proximal to that larger branch filling from the Lima. So we left a wire into that branch, which we assumed was the posterior lateral. Uh, and uh, now with contract injection, we are seeing, started to see some filling in that branch. And we were able with a dual a lumen microcatheter advance a polymer wire next to the origin of the PDA. We deliver a stingray and did multiple attempts to re-enter with a double blind stick and swab. Unfortunately, we were not able to get into the vessel, possibly because of calcification. The stingray would not go any further. We used a, a recross, do a loom microcaster, tried to re-enter using the recross, but unfortunately we had the same issue. And now we are seeing some hematoma and some compression of the true loom. We did some balloon angioplasty, and uh, we're seeing that we do have good flow all the way to the posterior lateral. So our initial wire went into the right posterior lateral. We have good flow into that small branch proximal to the main PDA, but the PDA does not really have very good flow. But at this point, it's been quite a long time, a lot of contrast radiation, and we decided to stop. We used a drug-coated balloon. The original plan was to go all the way down and use drug-coated balloon throughout the vessel, but delivery was challenging, so we did a drug-coated balloon just along the proximal cap, and then used a regular balloon to balloon into the posterior lateral and the distal right coronary artery. And this was the final result. We do have T3 flow into the posterior lateral, into that small first PDA. We don't have flow into the PDA. However, the patient did feel better and had significant improvement in the engine. And of course, before stopping, we wanted to check the lima, and the lima was fine without any injury during the contralateral injections. Multiple lessons from this case. The biggest one for me is the importance of guide support. We spent a lot of time with an AL1 and the guide extension. We just did not have good support. And then we used the 3D ride guide. And this truly changed the dynamics of the case, provided much better support. It was sitting much more coaxial, getting support from the back wall of the order. And then we were able to advance our knuckle all the way into the right posterior ladder. Throughout the case, we had to troubleshoot many issues. The guide support was one. The uncrossable lesion on the RCA was another one, trying to get through an occluded saphenous vein graft. Um, we did use advanced techniques like uh, uh, HDR, like the tilt technique for getting extra support. We eventually were able to go extra plaque and try re-entry. We tried different techniques for re-entry with the stingray, the recross, doing aspiration, using different guide wires without support. Eventually, we accepted the result. This is a form of an investment procedure, and we used a drug-coated balloon to minimize the potential risk of free stenosis. What was interesting is that uh, patients can have improvement even if one does not get complete revascularization. This is a very large RCA territory, and getting some flow to it may be enough for some patients. Nevertheless, the usual practice in lesions like this are to bring the patients back in a few months for a second attempt, although if the patients are asymptomatic, quite often they are content and they prefer to not come back. Thank you so much.